Hey, we left Charlieville, heading for our destination, Bower Station. We stopped in a little place for lunch called Kanamala, and they have a statue erected to uh, in commemoration of a song, the Kanamala, Kanamala Fella. If it was in New Zealand, we would have pronounced that Kanamala Fella, which would scan better, I think. But anyway, there's the Kanamala Fella, and immortalised in bronze. And we left there in the afternoon and we headed to Bower Station was our destination for the night. By this time the weather wasn't looking good. It was uh, very cloudy and dull. There's Bower Station, the letterbox, an old 44 gallon drum. And the government has bought this cattle station of 35,000 acres. And it's being managed for uh, the Wildlife Conservancy. He's yours truly, opening the gate. And a bit further, here we go. Uh, there's the front drive to Bower Station Homestead. It's a five kilometre drive down there before you get to the, the homestead, which was a pretty run down looking old place. We were staying in the Shearer's quarters, and uh, that was even more run down than the house was. The bed was about 1902 vintage. It was like it was warm enough, but uh, the rest of the day it got cold and it rained and they didn't have any uh, way of shutting the the wind off. They had a screen door at each end of the main room and the wind was howling through. There was freezing. And there's Anne cooking our tea for us that night. Pretty down home old kitchen, but anyway, <laughs> we put up with it. And there's a shot of our little bedroom off to one side. And the next day we got up and had a look around. How they run cattle there, I don't know. Because all I could see was dead tufts of grass stuck in the sand. And there was plenty of bits of scrubby old trees around. And the wildlife was as good as they said it was going to be. There's a brown tree creeper, which I've never seen before in my life. And a singing honey eater, also a first for me flitting about all over the place. All these wonderful rare birds. Just absolute magic. I was really frustrated because my camera would hardly focus in the gloom. It had clouded over with heavy, heavy cloud. And the next one is of a spotted bower bird. Also a first. These things are just rare as hen's teeth. And Major Mitchell's cockatoos, also a first. These were a long way off, and I had a heck of a job managing to get a photo. I took about 80 photos of them, and these probably the best of them. But uh, I couldn't resist one with this comb up. It looks just brilliant. Mobs of emu everywhere. They, this one was about 30, I guess, in that mob. So that was nice to see them. But the next morning, when we got up, it had been raining in the night. It had been cold. It got colder again, down to about 15 degrees. So we headed off. They'd closed all the tracks, so it wasn't worth staying there any longer. But uh, we intend going back one day. Stop to fill up with petrol, dollar 48 a litre. For some strange reason, they call diesel in Australia distillate. I've no idea why. Unfenced roads. These are what big trucks find difficulty negotiating at night especially in, at dusk and dawns. There's kangaroos and wallabies and goats and wild pigs, There's all sorts of things running across the road. So we were driving along there went through St George which is only a tiny little stop where you can get some petrol and we were heading for Gundawindi and hopefully some nice weather as you can see, I got this photo of the Gundawindi Hotel. It's a Victoria Hotel off the internet. And it wasn't quite as nice as it looked there. And here's an interesting thing. Being a little town, they latched onto any semblance of uh, fame that they could. And they once bred a racehorse called Gun Gunsin, the Gundawindi Grey. Uh, so it's immortalised with a little statue there, and the bakery is even called the Gunson Bakery. It's a vast cotton growing area, so it was that bad I couldn't even get out of the car to get some photos of the cotton. So 
once again I've uh, relied on a couple from the internet however on the way out of town the next morning <laughs> I was surprised to see this sign rabbit keeping is a big no-no in Australia it's against the law because they're overrun with rabbits as it is although Queensland has hares rather than rabbits for some reason and foxes so we headed for Warwick thinking we might stop there but it was still pretty grey and rainy so we headed off for Toowoomba and we stopped there and we went to the rug shop because we found out that they had a rug that was just what we wanted on the internet so uh, we popped in and bought it and uh, threw caution to the wind even though it was just about uh, dinner time at night uh, we headed for home which is another five hours drive and here is the photo that I normally put on to end my videos but it was a bit later than that the time we got home because it was 11 hours driving to get home so the moon was well and truly up and that is our trip to Charlieville.